TV people way in the back, huh? <laughs> A little bit of a different arrangement. Thanks for coming today and keeping people informed on what's going on in the city. Are we ready to start, Diane? Yes, we are. All right. Well, we want to talk about a couple of things this morning, and we certainly want to start out with uh, what is far and away the most important, which, of course, is our snow operations and, and what's going on in the city with regard to uh, how the weather has affected the streets and what we're doing to uh, keep the streets clear. Uh, <clears throat> earlier today, I was out at our, uh, our, our shop in the southeast, uh, and I tell you, the guys are out there, are ready to go again today and, and uh, to, to get these two storms whipped. Uh, but as you all know, they do extremely complex work in terms of, of having to deal with hundreds of streets in a short period of time and terrible, terrible weather conditions. Uh, they have to do it sometimes with misinformation, uh, information coming from the Weather Service, perhaps not their fault. Mother Nature changes things rapidly on us. And the first storm, for example, was not anticipated to be a major storm of any type. And all of a sudden it was, and the second one hit. So I'm, I'm really proud of the guys uh, this time around in terms of uh, what they've gotten done and how they've stayed with it and how they uh, stand up to the weather and how they stand up to public scrutiny. All these factors, uh, very difficult working conditions. So we took them some donuts this morning and we brought the media some donuts this morning uh, because you're a part of this too. Uh, we do the work. Uh, the citizens have to drive carefully, and you're our link uh, between the people who do the work and, and the citizens, and it's extremely important that you get information out, and we thank you for doing that, and uh, uh, I don't know how big the donuts are, but they, <laughs> they can't be big enough for you anyway. Uh, when it snows in Lincoln, uh, our first priority has, has to be the emergency routes, our major arterial streets, bus routes, and school routes. I think we all realize that that's the starting point. Each of the 19 routes uh, for clearing these types of streets uh, include about 60 lane miles. That adds up to 11 to 1,200 lane miles altogether. That takes time, especially if the snow continues, especially if the wind is blowing and closes up those streets a few hours after we've opened them and we need to do a second round. It may be that the crews will be over those streets several times, depending on the nature of the storm and the sequence of storms. Uh, that means we may not be able to get to residential streets as quickly as we would like, but you'll get information today on how that's uh, progressing. Uh, and of course, we count on the public to take their time to drive with extreme caution and to, of course, avoid those distractions that we would ask you to avoid at all times, such as cell phones. Uh, we also count on residents to observe parking bans. And right now, there are three types of parking bans in effect. The first type is the snow emergency parking ban, means that parking is banned on all main arterials, snow emergency routes, school routes, and bus routes. So that is the first type, and that is in effect. Second type is the residential parking ban <clears throat> that went into effect at 8 o'clock this morning. Parking is now banned on the even sides of the streets, that's the north and east sides, in all residential areas. Remember that bans remain in effect until they are terminated by the city. Plows uh, may need to make more than one pass on this particular occasion. The third type of parking ban is a snow removal district parking ban, uh, which is also in effect now in eight high density areas, such as, of course, the downtown. 
In these areas, parking is banned on both sides of the street from 12 midnight to 7 a.m. In these areas, uh, uh, snow is plowed into windrows, loaded into trucks, and hauled out of the area completely. To assist downtown residents during snow removal district parking bans, the city parking services will offer free overnight parking at the center park garage. You will find details on that parking option as well as the maps for the snow removal districts on the city website. Uh, this website is uh, an excellent source of information. Uh, Mickey Esposito has been improving that constantly, and we have even more ideas for improving that. Uh, but people should start making use of that website uh, when we run into snow conditions so that, they're, that they can be sure they have the right information. You will also find out on that website how to sign up to be a snow angel. Uh, to shovel snow for those who can't do it for themselves. So with that, and before we move on to uh, the other subject matter, let me bring uh, Mickey Esposito, our Public Works and Utilities uh, Director up here, and Roger Feigard, our City Engineer. He doesn't want to come up yet. We're, we're here for questions. You're here for questions. And Ty Barger, Ty, come on up here too. Uh, he's our Public Works Maintenance Manager. Ty runs the snow emergency operation and is doing a great job. So let me allow those three to tell you, give you more details. Thanks, Mayor. Good morning. Um, you know, Mayor really said it all with respect to our level of service that we provide here. Um, and have provided for these back-to-back -back storms. It can get really complex for us, but uh, we've been on high alert since 12 a.m. Saturday and uh, Saturday morning. And that's a good thing because we had expected, you know, a half an inch um, in the forecast. It's changed significantly overnight. Um, we went from less than an inch of snow to getting 7.9 inches uh, accumulation over the weekend. But backing up from Saturday, we actually began our effort with brine application and de-icing uh, Friday morning. So that brine application really paid off for us on Saturday and it allowed us to get all the way to 10 p.m. Saturday night when we had more than one inch of accumulation on the streets. So at that time, we called in crews to begin plowing operations and those guys worked 16 hours straight, straight through the night. Uh, all day um, from 10 p.m. Saturday to 4 p.m. Sunday. Uh, at that time, we had to send them home to rest. 16 hours is a long time. And I don't know if any of you were out on Sunday, but it was pretty miserable. We had high winds, freezing temperatures, turning everything to ice, huge snow drifts, and um, low visibility. In fact, uh, we were out to get an emergency parking ban order signed by mayor and it was like the world had ended. It was just covered in ice and low visibility and blowing snow. Uh, so because we had to keep plowing and material spreading over the areas we had already been, we just couldn't get to the residential streets on Sunday, which was the original plan. Driving conditions were so hazardous that we were advising people to just stay put, stay home, enjoy the Super Bowl, watch Katy Perry. And overnight, we put a quadrant crew together to go back over trouble spots with a plan to hit residential streets first thing Monday morning. Fortunately, the schools, uh, including UNL, helped us out greatly by calling a snow day. Um, my kids were particularly thankful, um, but we were also fortunate to have a lot of sunshine to help melt the snow on Monday and Tuesday while clearing all of the side streets and business districts just to get ready to turn around and do it all over again Wednesday morning. So that's a little, it feels a little bit like that movie Groundhog's Day. So yesterday morning, 76 operators were out on emergency routes, school routes, and bus routes, and thankfully school was canceled again. By noon, we received another 5.5 inches of snow, and this morning we be began clearing residential streets and hope to have those done today and tomorrow. 
I hope. <laughs> okay. Um, we should have a lot of help from the sunshine. We, the forecast is looking really favorable for melt. You know, Mayor kind of touched on this a little bit, but during these events, um, when we're all knee deep in these terrible conditions and snow um, and ice, I'm always reminded about how much people rely on our department. You know, and I want you to know that we take extreme care in planning for these events and executing the mission in front of us. Whether it's snow or a water main break or a pothole surge, we feel this massive responsibility to our citizens, making sure to protect people and making sure that they are safe. These crews, the support staff in the operations center, the managers, the volunteers, they work incredibly hard um, around the clock to get the job done, and they deserve a huge thank you from all of us. We are extremely proud of them. But also, uh, what's important to remember uh, just as citizens depend on our department to clear streets, we depend on our citizens to drive carefully, to take their time to let us know where the trouble spots are, and to help their neighbors. We rely on the media to get the word out accurately and responsibly. We rely on the school systems to make good judgments about whether to call a snow day. The point is we all play a part in events like these. So thank, thank you very much for doing your part. With that, we have Ty Barger, street maintenance manager here. He led the operation and also with the support of Roger Feigard, our city engineer. Uh, they're here to answer any questions that you have. Okay? The, the beet juice, I've had people seem to think the beet juice is supposed to be magic. <laughs> and that the streets will never freeze if we put the beet juice on them. So perhaps somebody could explain I think you said the other day it's just a new way of delivering the sodium and the chloride. Okay, yeah. So. Ty, do you want to sure. take that about how beet juice works? Yeah. Um, there's, there's a misconception about beet juice. Beet juice is not a, a de-icer. It doesn't melt ice or, or snow. We use it to improve the effects of our de-icers. It, it's got some sugar in it from the processing, and uh, that allows the the granular salt that we apply it to to stick better to the pavement, and it decreases the rate of leaching. So it keeps our de-icers on the pavement where we want it, which allows us to use less de-icer and makes our de-icers more effective. Um, do you have yeah. anything in particular from, I mean, I know there's two uh, big, big surprise and the big storm right after that, but any, any new thoughts on any way you'd want to tackle this kind of a problem in the future? Or, Think things went as well as they could considering what was going on? Honestly, I think things went very well. And Ty probably has operational tweaks, um, possibly, that he might be thinking of. It's very early. We have not done a formal debriefing of the snow events because they've run back to back. But I'm very pleased with how we did. We did everything that we could. We had every piece of equipment that we could have out there. We pulled in contractors. We pulled in augments. And uh, no, really proud of the way we got things done. And we do need to ask for people's patience, even when we have challenges like this. But and, and it's had some patience. Well, of course, you're saying 40, in the 40s, that's probably going to help quite a bit pretty quickly. Yeah, <laughs> yes, so right. The sunshine will be really helpful. How expensive is it uh, to major things like this, especially this much snow, unexpected weekends? I mean, are we <clears throat> Does it kind of intensify the cost, too, when it's like on a Sunday? Sure, Sunday? sure it can. And uh, Roger was going to answer questions about the budget. Two storms back-to-back -back like that certainly take uh, a big bite out of the budget. One of the things that I want to be, uh, I'm a little reluctant, is to try to give folks numbers today as we, if contractors, ag tractors, our own folks, it, we run about 10 days to two weeks uh, behind in accumulating costs and payroll and putting those things together. So it'll probably be about the middle of February before we know exactly where we are. And I'd hate to throw a number out and then mm -hmm. have that number be wrong at this point. But, uh, you know, having to do residentials two times back to back, mm -hmm. total snow removal, those are, those are large efforts. Um, you know, we're certainly not panicked, but we'll be accumulating those costs and then be able to share them better in the next couple of weeks where we are. Does Sunday make it more expensive too? Weekends? Is that? Yeah, there's overtime, you know, that additional overtime. But uh, really, the big effort is just 
the large volume of equipment and whatnot that needs to be out there to get things done and material. Yeah. Material. Sunday's event kept going on, so we kept going back over the routes. You know, two totally different kind of storms between Sunday and Wednesday, but in both cases, Ty's plan and whatnot worked well, and they were able to react and stick with it and uh, and get the rest they needed when they yes, needed to. Yes, right. that's right. Important. Do you have any idea how long this, you're expecting this ban to last? Uh, well, we have three in place. And you, the, the, sorry, the residential one. The residential yes. one. I guess I would ask Ty what your plans are. We have, we're getting into residentials today and probably tomorrow with cleanup. And um, yeah, um, we'll be working very, very hard to get as far as we can today. It'll be very tough to get the even sides of the streets done today. Um, high degree of confidence that we can get through evens and most all of odds as well tomorrow. Uh, that's what we're trying to do, but there is uh, some chance that we wind up having to carry this residential plowing operation into the weekend a little bit. We will be sure. Does it change to odds tomorrow at 8 o'clock, or do people have to wait and see whether you change to odds? No, I think that's a new executive order yeah. that'll come forth at the appropriate time. Okay, so and so then we're done information about given to the media with regard to the switchover. Right. Just in advance of the up. switchover time. Exactly. Right. If they're going to have it, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's yeah. whatever. Yes. If they continue Assume. or if they have a new one. So we'll be, yeah. As soon as we get it, you'll get it. Yeah. Right. Right. Let me just give you some idea. Is there a ban on parking downtown check. right now? <laughs> there um, is. It's, it's, but it's, but it's, certain, it's certain times of the, the evening. So it's overnight. It's a ban okay, overnight. So it's not right now. Yeah, right now, no. There is no ban downtown. It's just for those the period Are of operation overnight. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind repeating those hours to me of the, the downtown ban? So the uh, central business districts, yeah. it's 12.01 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 7 a.m. And it's overnight while they're doing the operation, the removal operations. So during the day, you're, and, you're all good. And that nighttime ban, mm -hmm. there are several other smaller districts, are there not, that are affected? Eight of them. Yeah, there's eight. eight. of them. Such as the small business district. College View, Havelock, Bethany, yeah. those other. Yeah. Can you name quick, all of them? Not <laughs> all of them, but I, you know, Havelock, Bethany, mm -hmm. College View, Union. Down Union College area. Uh, those other business districts, 11th and G, there's some other smaller ones. That the goal is to get that snow out of those business districts and not have to keep it on the side of the street. So all of those are included in that. They're, and they're obviously listed, downtown. They're all listed in the, in the latest advisory that yes. we gave you. And then yeah. there are actually maps at the website okay. as well so people can look and see if they're in there. So we will provide you notice when um, the residential moves to the other side of the street. You'll get that in advance. And then there's obviously still in place arterials, bus route, school routes, uh, a ban um, in place, in effect. So those are the three that we, we spoke about. Nikki, thank you. Yeah. In response to some conversation this morning with the road crews, uh, I hope you'll also remind the citizens not to follow plowing vehicles. Sometimes the citizens make assumptions based on the driving rules that anticipate the movement of the plows, but they should not try to do that because the plows will not necessarily follow the regular driving rules. For example, when a plow goes down the street, if there's a left-hand turn lane, for example, it will move in to the left-hand turn lane and plow that turn lane, but it won't turn. It'll continue to go forward down that same street and return to one of the middle lanes. If a driver is anticipating that the plow will turn, uh, they may be mistaken and they may be clipped as the plow pulls back into a driving lane. That's just one example. Uh, and so uh, we're hoping that you will pass on the message to be sure and not follow plowing uh, vehicles anywhere close at all uh, because their movements uh, will not necessarily be anticipated. All right. Uh, 
Let me move on to the second topic as, as quickly as we can here. Much smaller topic. Thank you all for uh, uh, participating. Uh, the second topic is a lot more fun, though. Uh, the second topic is the invitation to the, uh, to the community as a whole to attend the city's now 15th annual Abe Lincoln celebration coming up on February 22nd. And all of the activities will take place this year at Southwest High School. I'm pleased to announce that Lincoln will be the first city outside of Springfield, Illinois, to present a new play produced in honor of the 150th anniversary of uh, President Lincoln's death. It's called The Last Full Measure. It opened in November at the Presidential Library in Springfield. So it's uh, an honor uh, for us to present the first touring production. It's a one-man play about Lincoln's final hours featuring uh, Fritz Klein, who is one of the nation's foremost Abe Lincoln portrayers. Klein uh, lives in Springfield and performs regularly at the Lincoln Museum in that city, but he's returning to our capital city for his fifth celebration now uh, in one type of, of performance or another. Klein has performed as President Lincoln in 38 different states and internationally also. He's been featured on National Geographic, Discovery Channel, C-SPAN, History Channel. The event also features two showings of Intrepid, which is a 30-minute uh, film, you may recall, about President Lincoln's Civil War Balloon Corps and its chief aeronaut, uh, Thaddeus Lowell. Uh, Terry Lowell's with us today, I see. It's, uh, Terry's a, a former city employee and a member of the celebration committee. Didn't resign from that, I'm glad to see. Uh, and he is a descendant, you may recall, of Thaddeus Lowell. And, will display his uh, collection of items related to uh, this historic event. Terry, thank you. Raise your hand so people know who you are. Okay. The free celebration is presented by the City of Lincoln with the support of, of Humanities Nebraska, the Lincoln Arts Council, and the Lincoln Cultural Endowment. Additional funding is also provided by local businesses, uh, organizations, and individuals. The whole operation is run by a citizen steering committee that plans this event each year. We have several members with us today. Uh, in addition to Terry, uh, Jean Crump's here. Jean, thank you for being here. And Wayne Bowles, Wayne, he's the he's a L Magazine star, as you may know, <laughs> uh, of recent vintage here. He is not himself of recent vintage, but the, the magazine article was of recent vintage. Uh, and of course, our own Diane Gonzalez is a member of that committee also. We thank all of you for the free work that you do uh, uh, to remember where we came from. Music for dancing will be provided uh, for the first time by Glean, Greenblatt and Say of Avoca. I don't believe I've had the privilege of watching them. The event also includes music from uh, Chris Sayer, uh, who's performed, I think, at about every Abe every Lincoln ce celebration from the beginning. We thank him for that. The event also includes children's games and toys and activities and historical exhibits and impersonator, an impersonator's contest and free refreshments, including birthday cake, of course. Great educational and entertaining event uh, for all ages. I think there'll be more announcements, Diane Wright, in the next few weeks. So you can also uh, watch for update, updates on the website at lincoln.ne.gov. Celebration questions. Good to go? All right. Thank you all very much for being here.